Russell, the fine-tuning of the universe is to me one of the most important probative questions as to the nature of reality. But I have to tell you, I've been really frustrated by scientists taking one sorts of views, theologians, other views, philosopher, yet yet third, and many different approaches to the fine-tuning of the universe, which are in contradiction. Uh, you're both scientists and a believer. And so when you look upon the fine-tuning of this universe, how do you see it? I think the first reaction I have is that when, when most people look at the universe, at first sight they, they see it as being something very hostile to life. Hostile, because it's so, so big, it's so utterly big, you know. Um, cold. It's, it's cold, or if you get too close to a star, you know, like Mercury or Venus, it's too hot, <laughs> you know, or you might find a planet where there's no atmosphere, or it's the wrong kind of atmosphere, you know. Um, so it, it, it's, ve it's very easy to get the idea that um, the place is hostile, uh, the scale of it is all seems to be all wrong, you know. The sun is capable of swallowing up one million Earths. You no, know? who, who needs all that if all you want to do is keep a bit warm, you know? <laughs> um, and and so it, it it's it's very easy to to have sympathy with Steve Weinberg in in his book um, the first three minutes where he described life as a, an accidental you know, byproduct, you know. A farcical chain of accidents gives rise to it. So I think that the anthropic principle, the, the, the recognition that actually this, this universe appears to be fine-tuned for life, is, uh, and that this really is home, all right? It's big, but it couldn't be any smaller to accommodate us. The sun has to be that big if it's going to keep burning at, at, a, a, at a rate which will keep going for five billion years, which is how long it's taken for life to evolve here on the Earth. You know, everything is, is so beautifully fitted to, to make our existence possible. So I think that is, that is the first reaction I have, that, that I can look upon the universe as home, a natural home for humans and also for other life forms, intelligent life forms on other planets, all right? But then you go a bit deeper, you then say, okay, well, can I use this fine-tuning as, as an argument for the yes. existence of God? An argument from design. Now, as soon as you use the phrase argument from design, you now a cold chill goes <laughs> through you because this is a path we've been down before. Um, in the past, people would uh, look at the, the human body and say, you know, how beautifully it's designed to fulfill its function. You know, if you found a watch on the beach is the usual uh, illustration. And, you know, it's obviously been designed, yeah. yes? So if you look at this, it's like a watch, and therefore it must be designed. Therefore, you must believe in God. Now, we know that that um, uh, argument uh, was undermined by Darwin's theory of evolution, which provides an alternative explanation of, of how we humans came into existence. Um, it certainly undermines it from the point of view of it being a knockdown proof which proves to the skeptic that they've got to believe in God whether or not they like to. Now, I get a bit worried, to put it mildly, that now that we've been presented with the anthropic principle, here seems to be a second argument from design, this time from physics rather than biology. More sophisticated. It's more sophisticated, but essentially it seems to be lending itself towards um, a knockdown proof of God's existence. And, okay, that is countered by the, the multiverse idea that, okay, perhaps our universe is not alone, there are other universes, uh, that they're all run on different lines, and that if you have enough of them, an infinite number of them, then purely by chance, one or more is going to be a freak universe, uh, which is 
happens to be suitable for life development. And we, being a form of life, of course, have to find ourselves in one of the freak universes. Um, okay, one, one, can, one can knock the, the multiverse idea by saying, well, prove it. And okay, you're, you're not going to be able to prove it because, by definition, these are, are universes other than our own, and so we're not going to be able to make contact with them. Some versions of the multiverse idea is that there is the one universe, but it's broken up into different domains. It's the same effect. It's the same effect because these domains theoretically are so absolutely enormous that your chances of going out there and finding the uh, the ba boundary between one and the other is is, is impossible. Um, so. What, what does that leave us with? Does that leave us with the religious view that there is one universe and um, it's fine-tuned, or the atheistic view that there are many universes? I don't see it like that at all, um, and, and the reason is that I don't see why God shouldn't have made many universes. After all, when we, when we look at evolution, um, according to that theory, there are... There's a whole proliferation of, of, of different species. Um, that, 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 that evolution was God's way of bringing us into existence. All right, he sets the process going. It's, there are random um, uh, effects there. Um, so we wouldn't have been able to predict what's going to happen if you start evolution going somewhere else. You know, what, what's going to emerge. Um, but God knew that somewhere intelligent life was going, going to emerge. I, I, I know that some people have got this idea that if you start evolution going, you have no idea what's going to happen. Well, that is not the case because recently there has become this, this idea of convergence that certain features of, of living creatures have evolved in different ways, like the ability to see. The, the eye has evolved in completely different ways and they have all ended up with the ability to see in different ways. You know, the compound eye of, of, of the insect, our eye is quite, quite different, but they, they see. And there are a whole heap of other things where um, different solutions have converged. So what one knows that anybody starting off evolution is, is going to end up with creatures that can see and to do other things and creatures that will be intelligent. So God knows that when, when he gets the evolution process going, some creatures are going to emerge which are going to be intelligent, are going to be able to relate to him and start asking profound questions about what's the purpose of life, why am I here, is there anything beyond just normal everyday life, and can then enter into a loving relationship with him. Now, if that is God's strategy for bringing us humans into existence and intelligent ET into existence, Perhaps it's also part of the same mindset that he sets in process uh, a way of generating a whole plethora of, of different universes, knowing that somewhere there's going to come a universe which, purely by chance, uh, will have the extra bonus of, of having life in it. So what are the implications? Does this mean that this universe or one of the multi universes must must bring forth life and then ultimately consciousness well believing in god and thinking that that one of his aims was to bring us into being i, I say one because i think that we have to to recognize that for the the bulk of the existence of the universe there wasn't life here and uh there'll come a stage when there will no longer be life, but there's no reason why God shouldn't continue to enjoy this, this universe. And if he can enjoy this universe without life in it, then I'm sure he can enjoy other universes and, and enjoy his creativity in producing other universes. So um, 
I, I would say that God probably had a, a multiplicity of, of reasons for producing things, okay? But I think that perhaps the crowning glory is, is to have um, intelligent life that can relate to him in, in, in a loving kind of way because we, we know from our experience of God that love is, is such an important characteristic of him. So I think that... Um, uh, I, I don't mind whether the, there was a, is a multiverse or just one single fine-tuned universe. It, it, it's all due to all due to God. I think that the one other thought that I that I I have from the anthropic principle is that it's made me realize just how many conditions had to be satisfied in order for there to be life, and it's made me realize what a what a delicate plant life is and how, how fragile it is and how precious. Mm -hmm.